So I'm going to talk about a couple of things here. Uh, one, the jobs agenda for those of you who are chamber executives, I know you've all seen this. For those of you uh, who are chamber members, you may not have seen this. I'm going to talk about it briefly, and that is the Illinois Chamber undertook this project. Uh, I think we launched over a year ago at this point, or at least most of the last year. Uh, there was input from local chambers, from professional economic development people, from members of the Illinois Chamber. It was an ongoing process. We have now sent this to every legislator. We've sent this to all the major media outlets in the state. We've sent this to all the chambers in the state that are members of the Illinois Chamber. Believe it or not, there are some that are not. Uh, we have sent this to all the economic development people in the state, and we will continue to stress this. This is the message that I'm using as I travel the state of Illinois, because we set out to say, let's talk about the things we need to do to create a better jobs agenda in Illinois, a better environment in Illinois, and we laid out several points. Number one on that was get our fiscal house in order. Number two on that list was workers' compensation reform. Uh, we want to talk about streamlining and permitting, and I'm not going to go through all the points on it. And the last one, infrastructure, which is absolutely critical to our state, perhaps more so than any other state in the country. Uh, infrastructure is what helps propel our economy in this state, always has and always will, whether it's waterways or railroads or interstate highways or O'Hare Airport. It is all about, and then I should say in fiber optic networks, um, that it's all about positioning ourselves to move goods and services to help people. And we have to invest in it. And we have to invest in it consistently, and we have to invest in it routinely, and I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. So um, first, let's talk about workers' comp. Uh, President Colton talked about it briefly. For those of you who are not in the political arena on a day-to-day -day basis, you need to understand that workers' compensation is an issue that only gets dealt with in our state about every five years. The only time the political environment allows us to talk about workers' comp is immediately after a gubernatorial election. Uh, the Illinois Chamber, consciously aware of that timing, that calendar, actually began trying to beat the drum on workers' compensation reform over two years ago. We saw it coming. We wanted to set the stage. Uh, two years ago, this past October, we had our first workers' compensation conference in the state of Illinois, and who knows how long. We had about 150 people show up for that. This past fall, we repeated it. We had 350 people show up for that. We wrote a jobs agenda so that we could have workers' compensation right in front of everybody. Uh, I have been traveling the state talking about workers' compensation everywhere I can. I've been writing about it, and here's the basic approach. I want every chamber member in this state that understands it all about workers' comp to communicate to their legislators how important it is that we bring about significant reforms to our workers' compensation. I want you to write letters. I want you to pick up the phone. I want you to have face-to-face -face visits. When they come to speak to you for your legislative day, which you all have, make it an issue. Uh, the, the reality is we've only got a few weeks to deal with this between now and the end of May. Uh, and so I've traveled the state. I've been talking to local chambers. Now, truthfully, I've been targeting certain, legisl certain legislative districts. So I've been to Champaign. I've been to Moline. I'm going to Peoria. I'm going to where the Democrats are. They control the General Assembly. We have to convince Democrat members of the Illinois General Assembly that it is in their interest, it's in the interest of the state of Illinois, it's in the interest of their constituents that we do something about this issue. They have to feel comfortable to do that. And the only way they're going to do that is to continue to get the message day in, day out, at least a couple times a week, somebody's talking to them. So that when the door is closed in the Senate Democratic Caucus, a member of that caucus is willing to stand up and say to all the other members of that caucus, I'm going to vote for workers' comp. I'm hearing from my constituents. I know this is real. I know this is serious. I know we have to bring about change, and I'm going to be bold enough to do that. Now you guys need to join me and also cast that vote. And the only way we get that is for constituents to get involved. Now I will tell you that there's been an uptick in this in the last few months. I'm now hearing from companies that are not in Illinois, 
but have operations in Illinois who basically had written the state of Illinois off as a bad workers' comp, bad business environment for years, and now all of a sudden they've got an interest because there's a bubbling of uh, awareness in our state. We have a chance to do something about it. I've been trying to write uh, op-eds, trying to visit editorial boards, trying to, to uh, soften the beaches, if you will, so that we can get positive results in this. It's hard. It's a multifaceted issue. It touches literally thousands of people and industries because if you're a medical provider, if you're in the rehab business, if you're a hospital, a doctor, if you are a trial lawyer, if you're in insurance industry, you're all affected by what kinds of changes are in the workers' comp law. And I believe, quite frankly, that it ought to be a lot more between the, the organized labor and the employers or the non-organized labor and their employers than all these other parties that have a stake in it who don't want any change, but we have to have change. Now, a word about uh, uh, infrastructure. By the way, I hope I've persuaded you. When you leave this room, you're going to make a pledge to yourself that you're going to make a call, you're going to write a letter, you're going to have a face-to-face -face visit. And if you're an employer, you're going to tell all the other people that you interact with that they need to do the same thing over the next six weeks. Particularly if you're coming from a district where there's a Democrat senator or rep. Uh, secondly, let me talk about um, the budget and uh, a couple of things. It is unbalanced. It has been unbalanced. It's going to be unbalanced. And I hope that what John Cullerton said and what Christine Rodonio said is where we're going to end up. I don't personally have a lot of hope that we're actually going to get there in one year. We didn't get into this mess with unbalanced budgets overnight. I don't know that there's going to be a resolution overnight, but at least some people are beginning to get some religion over the fact that we need to live with our means. And that's the message of we just have to continue to hone home. home.